Today is World Teen Mental Health Day, a time to raise awareness about the mental health issues facing teens. Health experts say parents and caregivers play a critical role in their child's emotional well-being. Joining us today for Teen Mental Health Day is Dr. Cheryl Ziegler. Uh, what do we need to know that I feel like we have this conversation a lot, which mm -hmm. is needed, but what do we need to know that we maybe don't know? So here's what I think is so important for parents to know today. About half, in half the cases of people who are diagnosed with a mental health condition, the signs and symptoms were there prior to the age of 14. This starts early. And the other thing that's really interesting is in anxiety diagnosis, the median age, so meaning the, the middle age, right in the middle where you get diagnosed, six years old. My goodness. Really? Six years old. So we see anxiety starting very early in kids, right? It starts with separation anxiety, could be social anxiety. So my point is that we can, I love teens and I love focusing on teen mental health, but really you've got to lay that foundation prior to them becoming the teens because usually the signs and symptoms are there and it's adolescence that sort of is the stressor that exacerbates what was already there. So it's just multiplying on top of that. When you think about that anxiety issue though, I mean, I, I, the, the lead stories we shared today, I'm, you know, we're hearing about these swatting calls. Then we're talking about the kids at East High School. We're talking, our kids are living with so much more right now. So if you already have a little bit of something going on, how in the world do you cope? Well, it is hard and people are trying to understand what is going on. I mean, the Surgeon General has declared this. We are in a state of mental health emergency um, that is has lasted. So that started in 2021 and it's still continuing. Um, the, we have now a U.S. preventative task force that has created screening. So now if you're eight to 18, you get screened at your pediatrician or general practitioner's office and for anxiety and 12 to 12 and up, 12 through 65, to get screened for depression. So we're trying to do things to look on the preventative side of things, yeah. because in so many cases, we've already got this huge population, over 50% of youth, chronic sadness, feeling hopeless. So we've already had that going on. So what we're really trying to focus on now is of course treating them and also preventing this from happening in the first place. And you talk about prevention. As parents, we're like, what can we do? We Mm -hmm. Saving our kids from dealing with mental anguish is like at the top of the list, right, of being a parent. It is. What should we be looking for? It is. I mean, it's interesting that you say that. It is the top concern for parents these days. It's no longer abductions or a car accident. It is their mental health. Number one stressor for parents. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. It's a new phenomenon. So things you can do is you want to talk about mental health. So many people are scared. They don't want to put ideas in their kids' minds. That's not really what the data shows. Talk about it. Reduce the stigma. Tell your kid you'll get them therapy if they need to and look for the signs and symptoms. Are they sleeping, eating differently, hanging out with different friends, loss of interest in things, maybe wearing clothes or even wearing a hat at inappropriate times. Believe it or not, that can mean that they are excessively hair pulling or even cutting themselves, trying to hide it. So look for those signs and symptoms. Don't be afraid to confront it or say, I'm worried about you and get professional help. It is out there. It can be hard. We are limited, but there are a lot of resources out there. So Really, the big thing is eyes wide open, talk about these things, reduce the stigma around all of this. Yeah, and I think it probably would help too if, to break the ice. I mean, if you're struggling or you have something that has been a hard day or something that really made you sad, it's probably okay to just be really open and talk to your kids about it. I love that you say that, Kim, and, and in addition to that, that's very true, modeling, that's what we call it, modeling. Model what it is to have a good day, a bad day, you're sad, but also be honest about your family history. We yeah. know that heredity plays a huge part, particularly in depression and anxiety. So the four top diagnoses for kids are depression, anxiety, um, attention deficit disorder, and then behavioral problems like oppositional defiant disorder. Well, there's a strong heredity. ADHD is number one. So if you know that there are attentional issues or mood disorders or anxiety disorders that run in your family or within yourself, talk to your kid about it. It's like letting them know that heart disease runs in your family. And so that way you are extra alert and so are they around what that feels like and looks like and we can be on top of it much quicker or even prevent it in the first place. Makes so much sense.
That all makes sense. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Dr. Ziegler. It's, a, it's so important. It's the most important thing we can do, as Alex said, for our kids. So thank That's you. That's right. We appreciate it. Thank you. And don't forget, help is always one call or one text away. You can reach out to Colorado Crisis Services. That number is 844-493-8255. You can also text the word TALK to 38255. A reminder that the suicide hotline has an easy access number as well, 988.